Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul, and I am a nerd, and you are lucky enough to be here for the October 2018 Practice Master Virtual User Group Meeting from Attorney Computer Systems, where today we are talking about two new functions within version 19. Mary Jo is going to talk about changing the font and the size of fonts in the Practice Master data screens. And I am going to talk about restricting fields in Practice Master. And so, without further ado, I'm going to press a series of magic buttons that Mary Jo, I'll tell you right now, also include um, loading Practice Master. I forgot to do that. Uh, and then, once we get in there, Mary Jo will start talking to you about fonts and their sizes. I'm just waiting very patiently, Paul. You're being very patient. Okay, very we're patient. in. We're in as Ron. You may go. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to get this back just because I can't stand when we have our new version 19 and we're not seeing this beautiful new interface. So we're going to go ahead and get that back up here. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is the font settings um, on your screen. So that is probably one of the top questions that I always hear is, can I increase the font size on my screens? I can't read it. Or can I do this? Or can I do that? So here's the thing. Version 19 came out, and of course they redid this interface and made the font different, and they made it much easier to read. But in some instances, this is still not quite big enough, or you want a different font, whatever that case may be there is a way to go in and change the font size. And this is a global change. When we make this change, everybody gets the change. So you're not just changing it for one user, it's for everybody in all the fields. So what fields I'm talking about is when we look at, let's say for example, the client file, and I go into the address uh, tab, and I look at some of the information here, um, I'm talking about these labels for client name, and I'm talking about the data that's inside that field. That's the font sizes that we're increasing. Now you saw my list over here, that font size stays the same. I'm not, what I'm going to change is not going to affect these list views, but it will affect all of these different screens with this label and with the data that's inside of that field. Okay, so I just want to be clear on that. What we're changing is that information. But we can change it for all of the fields throughout the entire program for Practice Master, um, or we can just change it for a certain section. Now, this does not change the font size for tabs three. It does not change the font size for any of the accounting programs. We are only dealing with Practice Master. So again, there's a couple caveats, a couple restrictions. But if you're living in Practice Master, this might be just the option that you're looking for. So to change the font size, what we're going to do is go to the file that we want to change the font size on. So each file has its own database. So for example, the client file is one, the fee file, the calendar file, the cost file, all of those different databases we need to go into uh, to change these settings. So we're going to start with the client file. So when we get to the client file list tab, what we're going to do is go to edit, form designer. Once we get into the form designer, there is a little button on our toolbar here that is a control panel. It looks like two little slide buttons here, and it's right next to the folder here. So we're going to the control panel. When we click on the control panel, we have a section here that we can change the font. So on this one, I'm going to choose a custom font, and I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to do something really drastic here. I'm going to change it to this big uh, show card gothic font here so that you can really notice the difference in what I'm going to change. So you can change it to any font that's on here, so whatever that would be. But I'm going to do that, and I'm going to leave it at 10. But you can increase the font size here as well. So we'll say OK. Now you also have the option to apply the font to all Practice Master files. So rather than have to go into the calendar file and go into the fee file and go into all those files, I do have an option to do this all right here on the screen. But I'm not going to do that for here. I'm just going to show you. So in the background, you can see already that all of the labels have changed to that font. 
Now, one thing that you're going to want to be very careful about is if you increase this font to something like, you know, 16 or something really large, you may have to also then come out here to your form designer and increase the length and the, the width, um, the height of these fields because it's not going to fit. You can almost see with the work description that it's starting to cut off the end here because I've got this blockier, you know, thicker font. So it may be that, yes, we do want to increase these font size, but if you go in and do that and apply it to all Practice Master files, you may have to be opening every single one of these tabs, let me say okay to this, and making these fields larger. So the label fields and maybe even the data fields, you may have to stretch these out in the form designer. Now if I go to setup, you can see it's already done that here on the setup as well. All of the files here are now changed. Okay, so I've saved that. I'm going to go ahead and get out. So I'm just going to close. Uh, I'm going to close out of the clients here and save those changes to my form designer. So once I've done that and I go back into the client files, now you can see when I get to the address tab that not only the labels but also the data inside the labels is now that new font. Now again, I did something very drastic so you could really see the change. You probably aren't going to use this font, but that is an option. Um, and then all of the files inside of here are also all changed. Uh, if I look at the calendar, um, that's probably not the best way to look at that. Let me go into my file, open calendar. I'm just going to see if this is changing across all files here. Let's look at that. Yeah, it's not. So you that it, when I said that about all files, as after I said it, I was like, I want to be sure of what I was telling you. What this is doing with all? Oh, I didn't check it. I didn't check that. I didn't check the box. I didn't check the box. So, um, but it does do all of the files within the client file without. Well, no, I'm. That's not. That's the people file is not part of the client file. So you'd have to go to the people file database. So again, file open whatever database you want to change. Um, you can go to all other files. You could go out to your people file, um, uh, even your area practice files. All of those files that you have out here on your tree, you can change those fonts for that. Individually. Individually. Yeah. So you can do that. Or you can just apply it to everything. Yes. So I'm going to go back out to my client file, and I'm going to go back to my edit and form designer, and I'm going to change it back to the default just because I don't want to leave it out there weird. So our standard font is now um, this 10-point font. So I'm just going to go back to that standard font and then say OK. So that's how you can increase that. But again, remember, it is just for Practice Master. It is just um, for these files that I decide to do it for. Um, but it is global for all users. So all users will see that change. Awesome. Paul? Hold on one second. I'm sorry, somebody's changed all the fonts in Practice Master. I can't deal with it. Um, <laughs> I changed them back. You're good. Oh, you did, did you? Mm. Okay, I guess I watched you do that. Um, so that's, that's my bit of advice. Be careful what you change them to because somebody's going to complain, and it's probably going to be me. I'm going to talk about restricting fields. Let's pretend, if we will, for just a minute that over here, Now you've changed them back. Okay, yeah, we don't want to. <laughs> yeah, but over here, well, you did. This one was already open. <laughs> Patty, someone's changed all the fonts. Okay, okay. That, that is one more thing. You will have to close all your windows you and close reopen all your them, windows and then and that change them. takes effect. Did forget to so I'm going to talk about restricted fields. This is also uh, very cool, and it's also something that has a great deal of functionality for the people that really need it. Um, I can think of several clients that are already using this function. Let's pretend that the um, fee agreement and the, the, the date we received it and what type of fee agreement it was, let's pretend that Patty maintains all that. And we have a problem here because certain other people are getting in there and messing with those fields. Okay? As you can see, I have access to these fields right now. I'm going to, in a minute, I'm going to restrict those fields so that they uh, are not accessible to everybody. Uh, and, and the way we do that is 
Let me get this out of the way. If we go into file maintenance, which is something that you as a user may not have access to, but someone in your firm probably does, and pull up the file that you want to restrict fields in. In my example, it's the client file. And then get to the field section and find those fields. Help me out here, Mary Jo. You had to help me this morning. There it is. So here we have it. Now, what you'll notice is that we've already got restrict changes set on for these two fields. Now, what that means is that the person that I'm logged in right as right now has the right to change the fields in the client file. And in a minute, we'll show you what it looks like when somebody without rights logs in and does that. So I'm going to go out of here, and I'm going to show you how you assign those rights. And so I'm going to go into system configuration right down here. And I'm going to go into access profiles. And I'm going to pull up, oops, that's users, and this is access profiles. And so I'm going to pull up the practice master section once I get to one that I want. I think I'm going to do PM, PM only. And I'm going to go over to PM, and I'm going to go to file information, and there's cl client information right here. And at the very bottom, we're going to, there, somewhere up here is change client restricted fields. Yep. I was on it. All the way up. So right there. Now you'll see that that is set to no. Now I'm going to back off and I'm going to explain some things. I can't simply say these two restricted fields in the client file are restricted and only this group of people can change them, whereas these other two fields in the client file are restricted and this other group can change them. I cannot do that. When I am assigning the rights to who can access the restricted fields, it's on a file by file basis. So I can say, who can access the restricted fields in the client file? Who can access the restricted fields in the calendar file? Who can access the restricted fields in the journal file? Now, most often, it's one person in the, in the firm that can access all the restricted fields, no matter where they are, and it's everybody else can't, okay? So that's usually not an issue that you can only do it by file. Um, but we've had instances already where people have wanted to say, just these two fields are restricted to this group and just these two fields are restricted to that group. Can't do that. Are you going to say something, Mary Jo? I, I was going to, because I was going to say you can also, if you say that a user can change client restricted fields, it's also any field that you restrict as well. So if you say that these six fields are restricted fields, and you give access that they can change restricted fields. It, you they can can't access all six. All six. Right. You can't just say just these two. So just like you can't do it with users, it's the same thing with the right. fields themselves. Right. Yeah. That's kind of what I was. That's kind of the point. I that the, the 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 flip side of the point I was trying to make. You can't choose um, which fields. You can choose which users by which group they go into. So I have said no that this group cannot. Uh, access the client restricted fields and if we go up and look at Ron we'll see he's a manager so he's got rights to everything so that's why Ron can see those and access those fields if I pull up Pam she is set up as PM only and as we just saw PM only users any user that's assigned to the PM only uh, access profile as long as they're not assigned to another access profile that does give them the right if they're assigned only to access profiles that restrict that right, then they won't be able to access those fields. So let's go see what that looks like. Let's get out of Practice Master and all the way. I'm going to go right back in and I'm going to sign in as Pam. And now when I go over to that client file and then get over to that details page, we'll see that these fields are visible to me, let me get out of there, but they are grayed out. Just like these fields are grayed out, these are fields that can't be accessed because they're virtual fields. These fields are grayed out for Pam, but as you saw before, they were not grayed out for Ron.
So to summarize, it has to do with a couple of different things. First off, restricting the fields. Second off, modifying the access profile so that the groups that you want to have access do, but all others do not. And then third, making sure that the right users are assigned to the right access profiles. Once you've done all that, somebody like Ron, who's a manager, can see and edit these fields, and somebody like Pam, who's set up as a PM-only access type, can see but not touch these fields, and that's restricted fields. Okay, very good. So, of course, it wouldn't be a tabs three or practice master or world docs virtual user group meeting if I didn't take you to our website and show you how you can get to all of our content. So I'm going to tell you that if you go to attorneycomputersystems.com, notice my emphasis on the last S in the word systems. And if you click on the word videos in the menu up here, ignoring the drop down that pops up when you hover, you will get to a page that lists all six titles that we have in our video library. We have, of course, the three virtual user group meetings. You're currently in the Practice Master virtual user group meeting. We also have them for tabs and World Docs. We also have a live event that I do each month called the Coffee Pot Webinar, where we take people from companies that have products that add value to tabs, free practice, master, or world docs, and we invite them into our environment to show us that product and explain how it adds value to one of our core products. Uh, we also have some pre-recorded video titles. Uh, Mary Jo does her eBytes video series. She records three of these every month, one on tabs, one on practice master, one on world docs. Uh, these are short, little two or three, sometimes four minute videos where we take something really cool that we can explain in a very short period of time and we record an eByte about it. Uh, we also have our longer format Paul and Mary Jo show, which is kind of the same thing, but these last 10, 15, sometimes even 20 minutes and we take a topic that's more broad or needs to be delved in more deeply uh, and, and really dig into it in the Paul and Mary Jo show. If you'll go to any of our titles, uh, I'm gonna go to a live one, um, you will find a description of what it is. So we've got the title and a short description of what it is. Since it's a live event, we'll see information on the next uh, event that's coming up along with two links to register that are identical but uh, take you to the same place, but some people don't like to click on a link without seeing what it is. That's what that one is. Uh, we describe what's going to be happening. Uh, we then, as you scroll down, you will find recorded versions of everything we've ever done in the past in that particular title. So we've got about 800, 850 videos on our website. We're adding about nine or 10 every month. So this is a very large and vast library of video content that's growing rapidly. If you're looking specifically for something and you're not in a browsing mode, you can type a word here and either select from the quick list that pops up or hit enter and go to a broader list that's gonna show you all the titles that have that word either in the title or the description. So there it is, something to sit by the fire with a glass of wine and a laptop uh, spending long nights watching videos about tab three, practice master, and world tax. That's it for today. Everybody have a good rest of the day, good rest of the month, and we will see you in November. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.